Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by David Alvarez, a Tony Award winning actor who plays Bernardo in Steven Spielberg's new version of West Side Story. Uh, congratulations on the performance, David, and uh, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited to speak with you, Christopher. Uh, so I wanted to start before, and you have such an incredibly rich backstory that I'm excited to hear you talk about, but I just want to first start with like what your first exposure to the original West Side Story was and like, you know, how you like thought of the original musical, I guess, before coming on for this. Yeah, um, the first time I really saw West Side Story was when I was about 12 or 13 years old. I was doing Billy Elliot on Broadway at the time, and um, I had a chance to go see the West Side Story that was running on Broadway. And I completely fell in love with the characters, the music, the dancing. I mean, it was just, it was one of the greatest shows I, I've ever seen. Um, and I remember walking out of that theater and thinking, I want to one day play Bernardo. I don't know how or where or when, but one day I, I, it needs to happen. So it's crazy that I'm here right now. That's that's incredible. And I, like I said, I can't, I'm so excited to talk to you about because I think your performance is great and, and the film itself, I think, does so many really wonderful things with all the characters in Bernardo, especially. But so you mentioned like you're you were on Broadway for Billy L. You won a Tony Award. Then I know from other interviews I've seen you you joined the army actually after that. Yeah. And I guess I wanted to add, like, you know, like I think that's so incredible. And I guess what did that experience teach you about yourself, you know, that you were able to, you know, now carry through obviously to you know, you're more uh, being in more adulthood and obviously your performance here. But I guess like what, what like when you were in in the military, what did that like teach you about yourself, I guess? Yeah, I, I think it really taught me a couple of really valuable lessons. One is to be humble because <laughs> when you're in the military, you realize um, you're part of a team. It's not about you. It's, it's about the team and it's about the community. So I think that was a really important lesson to learn. Um, another lesson was just to be mentally strong at all times, no matter how tired you are, how hungry you are, how cold you are, um, to be able to get yourself up on your feet and continue on. Um, and that's a lesson that, that stays with me for life. Um, and also kind of being able to access that inner warrior inside of you, um, which really helps you know, your character work in the future when, when you have to access that. Um, so I, I think it really helped me in the long run and it and it's enhanced my my artistry. Was that surprise? I guess was that surprising to you? Like when you entered the military, did you expect to like go back to acting or like what were your thoughts at that time? I know it's like weird maybe to think yeah. that far ahead, but like what were you thinking? I mean, when I joined the military, I never thought I'd come back to acting or the arts in general. I, I was actually thinking about making it a career. Um, I wanted to become an officer and hopefully one day a general. Um, but I think about three years in, um, towards the end of my first contract, I realized, you know, I, I really do miss being an artist. I really do miss acting and singing and dancing. Um, and I think that's what I, I should be doing in that this military experience. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for because it's going to help me. Um, down that path in the future. So I, I went in thinking I, I'd make it a career and then I, I got out kind of hoping that um, maybe I could continue on as an artist. Well, yeah, that, that's, a, that's incredible to hear. And I guess so I know, and also I know from like doing a little research before we spoke and stuff that you were, so then you, after the military, you were you studying to be a philosophy professor, I believe, and were backpacking in Mexico when you got the call or, or made aware of the West Side Story remake. Obviously, yeah. you said earlier that you were like super psyched about, you know, when you first saw the show in 2009 um, about like Bernardo, I guess, like, what was your, like, how did, like, what was that reaction? Like when you're like, oh, wow, this is actually something that could maybe happen, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy because when I came back from the army, um, I went back to New York and I did a Broadway show on the town. And after that, again, I, I felt like I wasn't sure if I wanted to be an artist. Um, and I ended up watching this movie and reading the book um, Into the Wild. And I was very inspired by it. So I decided to buy a one way ticket to Mexico and just backpack around Mexico. And I really had no idea if, I, if I'd ever be back. Um, I just kind of went on that journey and I was in Mexico for about three years, I think. And then that's when I get a, um, a message from the casting director of West Side Story saying, hey, we've been trying to track you down. Where where the hell have you been? <laughs> you know. Um, and 
once I saw that message to send a self tape for Bernardo, you know, I kind of went back to um, Ohio. Um, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen with this movie. So I was studying philosophy at Case Western um, in the hopes that maybe one day I'd become a philosophy professor or something. But then I sent in self tape and things escalated so quickly. <laughs> I was a couple of weeks later, I was in New York with Steven Spielberg, Tony Kushner, Jenny Tesori, you know, just all these incredible people, Justin Peck, um, trying to see if I could even do this role. Um, and, you know, the stars aligned and, and it, it just escalated to the point where I got the role. And then I, I was just focused on training and getting ready for, for the character of Bernardo. That's incredible. And also, and Into the Wild is a great book and movie. So it's good, uh, yeah. good inspiration as well. Um, <laughs> but the, I, so you mentioned like the preparation for Bernardo. And so, I mean, like, like I mentioned, I might've mentioned this at the top, but if I didn't, I was thinking, I mean, I think that the, one of the things I really love about this film is how the Tony Kushner script really fleshes out so many of the relationships of, uh, of the, the yeah. characters and the, and the, their backstories and it just makes, it contextualizes so much about what's happening. And I think that's like what really makes it so rewarding as a film. So with Bernardo, obviously you get so much more backstory about his, you know, physicality as a boxer, but I think also like the relationship with Maria that he has is so great partially I think you and, and Rachel have great chemistry as like a brother and sister but also like I think the having an appropriate age Maria and the right you know having uh Latin actors playing these parts all these things like kind of really blend together to make it just feel so much more authentic so I guess can you talk about like I don't know those kind of preparations not just the physicality and the dance like you said like it is definitely a triple threat performance yeah. where you have to do all these things but even specifically like working on those relationships too I just think it's so great yeah I mean I just I remember specifically thinking that um, I definitely wanted to bring an element of Bernardo that I don't think had been really seen before in West Side Story, which, which is that balance and play between this really overprotective fighter um, to also someone who cares and really does love and is really trying to understand. Um, and I wanted to play with that dynamic. And I had such incredible actors around me, like Ariana and Rachel, who made it so easy to, to play off of them. Um, and it's funny because the very first day I met Rachel and Ariana during the callbacks, there was an instant connection. We, we just got along really well. When we worked together, it just flowed beautifully. Um, we definitely felt like it was right. Um, and then Tony Kushner's script enhanced those relationships on top of it. Um, so when you had that kitchen scene, um, you really see the dynamic of what it's like to be a Puerto Rican family and, and how they interact and how they try to understand each other, how Bernardo is overprotective, but also loving how, you know, Rachel is independent and strong. Um, and is trying to get her point across, but also loves Bernardo, you know? So you can see those dynamics beautifully, thanks to Tony Kushner, to be honest. Um, he kind of really fleshed out those characters and, and gave us a chance to, to show that love and that care that we really have for each other. Yeah, I mean, I think the script, what were your, what were your conversations like with Tony about like the character, I guess, like more like that, I guess, or more, are there other things that you guys kind of talked yeah, about too? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I, I really had in my mind was I, I was really inspired by the 1967 Romeo and Juliet um, movie. And I was, I really loved Michael Kors' uh, performance as Tibble in it. Um, and I remember I wanted an element of that in Bernardo. I kind of wanted to bring Tybalt you know, Tybalt's soul into Bernardo. You know, Tybalt is a master fighter. He's the best with the sword. Um, there's everyone scared of him. You know, he knows what he's doing. Um, but he also has this love and passion for his family and for Juliet. Um, so I, that was kind of my inspiration to kind of spearhead what I wanted for Bernardo. And then everything else was kind of cherry on top, you know? Yeah. No, it's it's great. I think I think that really works, and that's another 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 great movie on top of all these other yeah. things we're talking about. It is a good that the Romeo and Juliet version is really, really I think a, a classic version of that, that yeah. story. Um, I, the other thing I wanted, you know, in that kitchen scene you were talking about, I think like that is when I mean it happens a lot. Obviously, I know Stephen has talked about how the the dialogue you got there's not they're not subtitling dialogue, right? And I think that's so yeah. important because I think he had said 
uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. It was like, you don't want to put too much, you know, you don't want to put weight, like unbalance the English versus the, the Spanish language dialogue yeah. and like, kind of like keep things on an even, even level. I found it so incredible. I'm just not even, not really seeing something like that. I found that like such a great story note. And I thought that was great. So for, I mean, can you talk a little, like for you guys, I don't know how, like how rewarding was that? Or like, how did you like, like, how did you view that? Cause I think it makes it feel so much more authentic as well, because like oh, you guys wow. are speaking like in, you know, like in the characters is like native language, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had no idea that there were going to be no subtitles until I saw it the very first time and someone mentioned it and I was like, oh man, you're right. There are no subtitles. And then it got me thinking, I thought it was really genius. Um, I thought it was incredible to do that because then you get really sucked in and immersed in what's going on. And you're not so much trying to figure out what words are coming out of their mouth, but you're trying to figure out the energy behind those words and the emotions behind those words. Um, for example, when I'm kissing Anita in the, in the kitchen, um, and I'm saying, you know, I'm flirting with her in Spanish, you don't have to know what I'm saying, but you know there's love there. Um, just like when I'm in the rumble screaming a Spanish word, you don't have to understand what I'm saying, you know I'm pissed off. Um, so I think it really does add an element of immersion that that in the end helps and, and kind of um, heightens uh, the whole world within it. Yeah. And I want to ask you, too, you mentioned two things there that I was also want to talk about. So obviously beyond the like we said, like it is a very physical performance, too, because you have you obviously are such a large part of the America sequence, which is incredible and like just really incredible. I just have no other words. For it. it was so good. <laughs> and then obviously the rumble, too, is so I mean, it's staged in such a, you know, I think the whole film, obviously, the, the, the original film is is of its era and time. And it's not maybe, you know, you have Steven Spielberg doing like an action scene, basically, it's going to be like much more elaborate and physical. Yeah. And, you know, like, can you talk a little about the preparation for both of those? Because I know, I, I remember, like, you guys shot the America one, I think it was like one of the hottest days of the year in New York City. Yeah. That had to be just <laughs> absolutely brutal. And then I yeah. guess also like the rumble, I'm sure it was like, equally physical and you know exhausting maybe so I guess what was that like to have to you know what were yeah. those two sequences like basically I mean it, it was definitely very interesting they were both really fun in their own way I remember for America Ariana and I just were always our, our first priority was make sure we're having fun make sure the love is there make sure that the the whole community is behind us and and it just having a good time you want that celebration that energy um, so it was really nice to kind of fall into that mindset. And then when you get into the rumble, it's a whole different mindset of, you know, kill or be killed. Um, and it's, it kind of, it was interesting to see the dynamic of shooting such different scenes with such powerful emotions, you know, from love to complete hatred and fear. Um, so I, I had a great time and I, and then that shooting America was definitely difficult because we were out in the streets. Um, it, like you said, there was a heat wave when we were shooting this, um, we had thick clothes on, I had a thick black wool shirt on our, the soles of our shoes were melting on the cement floor. Um, Ariana had to use like three different pairs of shoes to finish off the America sequence. <laughs> um, and then I remember for the rumble, it was all night shoots. Uh, we started at 6 p.m. and went on till 6 a.m. for six days straight. And it was intense. I mean, I've never felt that kind of energy from the whole cast, the whole ensemble. Um, and it was really beautiful. Um, it's really rare to, to come across something like that and to see everyone so passionate to be there and giving it everything. I mean, there wasn't one person who wasn't giving it everything. And that's really rare. And, and it's a beautiful thing that we got to experience that. Yeah, yeah, you meant, I, I mean, like, having seen you guys on, like, the red carpet and stuff, it does feel like there's a great, you know, I think you you were seemingly, everybody on the cast, like, really close, and I think that comes across. Do you credit that? I mean, is that a mix of, like, what would you credit, like, is that because Steven Spielberg is such a great, like, is he putting together the right people, or are you guys, yeah. like, you know, like, how do you, like, what would you credit that for, like, that kind of I would 100% yeah. credit that to Steven Spielberg. I mean, he, he shows up on set with a with a certain kind of energy that trickles down to the entire cast and crew. He's the kind of man that he does everything out of love, out of passion. He's excited. Um, he's grateful to be there every day doing what he's doing. And I think when you see that, when you see your leader um, 
kind of leading by example and showing you that, yes, you can create art with love and passion and, and be proud of it and be grateful. Everyone was feeling that and everyone was just, we were, every day people were crying just because of how happy they were to be there. Um, and that's, I've never seen that before. You know, I've never seen people cry at a job because they're so happy to be there, you know? So it was, it was really beautiful. And I think, I think it really does start with Steven Spielberg. He's not only a great director, he's a great leader and a great father figure. Yeah. That's amazing. And so I'm, and we have to wrap up here. I know and it's been great chatting with you. And obviously you mentioned you won a Tony Award for Billy Elliot. One of, I saw on social media, there was a meme of like, you at the Tony Awards, and then <laughs> yeah. right behind you was Brian Darcy James, who was nominated that year for Shrek. Did that, you guys, I mean, does that ever come up, like, on the set, obviously? Yo, or that no? comes up all the time. No, we, I mean, we love each other so much. Working with Brian was so incredible. He's such a gifted and talented performer. Um, and it's just crazy to see how life works, how, you, you know, how small the world is and how you, I looked up to Brian, you know, like, he was an inspiration when I was a little kid. I always thought I want to grow up and be like him be be a Broadway star you know and it's crazy that here we are working together in a Steven Spielberg movie so it was just a beautiful experience um and he's such a loving person on top of it so just all my love to Brian you know I love that man yeah and super fun and he's obviously great as officer probably as well David oh, Alvarez uh, so he's so good uh thank you so much for doing this uh, West Side Stories in theaters now uh congratulations on the film again it's great and your performance is awesome so thank you uh, thank you so much Christopher appreciate it